Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at the pseudo-abstract strategy game called Take. In this one, the players are going to be drafting different character tokens, such as samurai, geishas, and uh, ninjas, things like that, in order to have a stronger force on their side, but also decide when scoring happens and hopefully have a better score for that scoring than their opponent. Let me give you a look at how this works. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you if it's an enjoyable and engaging game. To set up the game, the players are going to use the included bag here and randomize these tokens into stacks of seven tokens and place them across the center there. Each player is going to sit on one side of the board and they are going to attempt to control these characters at the right moment, score the most victory points on the score track here. And once all of these tokens have been taken, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. So to set up the game, we've already done all that. To uh, play the game, we are going to go through four steps each, back and forth until the game is over. Step one is you may utilize the abilities of your characters. Obviously right now we have no abilities. I'm gonna come back to that in just one minute. Step two means picking a character from the top of a stack that does not have one of these ghost tokens on there and taking that character. And then step three, you put a ghost token on there to mark where that came from. And then lastly, step four is scoring based on the character you have revealed. So the one that was below the one you just took. All right, and that's basically it. That goes back and forth with the other player taking one of these, marking, scoring, and so on. Once all of these are filled with the ghost tokens, then they're all removed for the next player. All right, so let's backtrack here slightly and take you through how this works. So uh, let's say that I am going to take this ninja, I'm gonna put it back here in my back row, which is where the characters go when you take them, and then we would score the samurai. Neither player has any samurai, so it goes to my opponent. They are going to take this character here, the geisha, put it in their back row, mark this column, and we would score uh, the, uh, the uh, orange tokens there. Neither player again has any, so that's it. Comes back to me. I'm gonna take this token here, put it back here, and I've revealed a ninja, which I do have, so now we would score. Uh, both players score, by the way, every time there is a scoring, and the score is based on the total of characters that are out here times the number of times you can see that type of character at the top of a stack. So in this case, I have one ninja back here, worth one victory point, there is one showing, that's a single point, one times one. And I would move up on the score track, my opponent has none, so they would get nothing. Comes back to their turn, and they are going to take, uh, let's say they're going to take this character here, mark that, there are no samurai, so neither player scores anything, and then that comes back to me, I'll take this one, uh, but I, don't really want to. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's why I don't want to. Okay, if I take this one, I'm scoring blue. I have no blue. They have blue. I'm giving my opponent points. But I have to because it's the last stack that doesn't have a ghost token on it, right? Well, not quite. Here's where the powers are going to come in, okay? So we've got three different powers. Four, really, if you are accounting for this one, but I'll explain why that one's not really its own power. So this character here is going to allow you to move up to three of your samurai from any one spot to any other spot and you on your side of the board here and the uh the samurai behave as wild tokens so they score themselves if you've revealed a samurai they just score you know themselves they each have a point but they'll score based on the color that they are assisting as well so in this case if this is here and we score blue blue is in fact getting one two three points times however many are showing out here and so this one lets me reposition them uh, to you know enhance my score and the way you would trigger these powers by the way is by taking the token and pushing it forward triggering the power but lowering your score your potential score let's say 
So that's how that works. And by the way, when you trigger powers, you may do on one turn, you may trigger each one once if you want to, but not more than once per kind. So that's what those do. The blue tokens are going to allow me to mess with the ghost tokens out here. So this is something I could do, right? Uh, I could take, uh, let's say, this one and change it to here. I could add an extra one somewhere, or I could even just remove one entirely. The uh, purple token, the geisha here, lets me take a character from the top of one stack and move it to another stack. They have to be empty like so, but I could do that and then take a token. You cannot take the one that just moved, so I cannot do this and then take that one triggering that scoring. But I may move this and then take this one as the one I'm scoring, all right? And then lastly, the ninja, which as I said, it's not really its own power because what it does is, as I trigger a ninja, which I'll go ahead and do now, this will be my power, okay? I'm gonna trigger a ninja, and that lets me use one of my opponent's characters by pushing it forward and using the power. And in this case, I'm going to move one of those ghost tokens. I'm going to move this one here, and I'm going to take this character, place it in my back row, and score orange because uh, that's way more beneficial to me than blue for my, you know, that it would be to score blue, which just helps my opponent. So I've got one of those characters back here worth two victory points times two showing. That's four points. One, two, three, four. None for my opponent. And then I have to mark this, which means now that it is their turn, they get a brand new slate and they can take from anywhere. And this continues back and forth with you utilizing powers, uh, though it's, it is detrimental to your score, manipulating what's going on, scoring at the best moments, being careful that when you do score, you're not actually helping your opponent more than yourself, utilizing the samurai at advantageous spots to, to you know push that score, and so on. This is going to continue until all of these have been taken. And then at that point, the uh, players are going to, um, once, let's, let's just jump ahead here. Give me one sec. All right, let's say this is where we are. Uh, da, da. Then, you know, this player might take that and they'll score. As you see, there are some pre-printed ones on the board here. So this still counts for scoring. So in this case, one times four for me, I'd get four points. They'd get two times one, two points. This comes off. I'll take one, mark it but then it immediately comes off because my opponent has to take the last. And now that this is all done, then we figure out who's got the high score at that moment and the game's over and that player wins. That's it. So you will burn through all of the tokens. Again, there are uh, seven in each stack. And once that's all done, highest score is the winner. So that should give you an idea of how the whole thing operates. I do want to point here before I go uh, up and tell you some final thoughts what the score track looks like because I'm going to be complaining about it in just one minute. And the score, as you can see, goes here through here. It winds around. Some of these spots are actually smaller than the token, FYI. And then it comes around. It goes under a bridge and it skips from 30 here to 31 there goes under this bridge again, skipping again, then goes over the bridge. The bridge itself counting as two spaces. So in this case, uh, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. Two spaces on this one. From this 60, it jumps to here. It does the same thing over on that side. If you go over 120, which has happened, then I, I suppose you jump back over to 121 at that point and continue doing that, all right? Uh, so that's it for the board. Let's go back up. All right, so there it is. Let's talk about it. I'm going to launch into it with thematic ties here. This game, as I said in the intro, is a pseudo abstract game because while it plays kind of like an abstract game, it does have a theme. And I like the theme. And I think it does fit the um, what you're doing in the game, I think, goes hand in hand with the elegance of the setting. Now, I'll, I'm going to knock on that a little bit once I get to aesthetics, but as far as the theme goes, I like it. The aesthetics, I think, are a little bit all over the place. For one thing, the cover, which you see there behind me, same thing that's on the cover of the manual, I think fits that elegance and that look, and this kind of what I was hoping for. The game, the, the rest of the game, the characters have this cartoony, cat-like quality to them that does not fit that cover whatsoever. And then the scoring track on the sides has its own unique cartoony look. 
which I'm gonna, uh, that scoring track, oh. Um, so I don't like that everything kind of looks like it's all over the place. Like maybe it should have had a, more, a much more unified look that fits the, the feeling and the vibe of the game. And that would have been a lot more forgiving here. Score track is horrendous. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It is a winding path. The spaces are not consistently spaced out. Some of them are very small, so the token literally barely fits on there. It doesn't fit on there sometimes. Uh, the, the jumping around, the winding under the bridge, but over the bridge also. It's a oh, horrible, horrible idea. They should have had a secondary board for scoring. They should have just cleaned up that scoring on the sides if they want to stick with that. It is not a good idea. I'm not sure if they thought that was really thematic or what, but it does not work and really hurts the usability. Um, so, don't like that. <laughs> replayability, I think, is all right. It's it's fine. It's not the kind of game that is going to be uh, so infinitely replayable that you'll keep coming back to it forever. But I think you're going to learn how to do some things and um, how to get better at looking for opportunities where you can spend your powers to set yourself up for a nice chunk of points while denying your opponent, hopefully, the same opportunity. So that's fine. Game length, I was a little bit worried the first time I played that it was going to be a little bit too long because while the first few turns were very quick, it, it, it quickly, maybe let's say one third of the way into the game, the players very much visibly sort of slowed down and started thinking about what was more interesting. That speaks towards the tactics in the game, which is good, but I was worried about the length. Thankfully, the game does not feel like it, like it outstays its welcome. I think it's good. It's a good length. The ease of play, which is fiddliness, iconography, anything like that. I don't find the game play to be fiddly. I, I like it, and in some ways it does feel kind of like an elegant play. The iconography is fine as well. The design choices, which I group into ease of play, is where I'm a little bit um, not sold on it. I think it's... I'm just, I guess I'm not ultimately a big, big fan of this idea of hurt yourself or potentially hurt your score in order to get a benefit. And while that sounds interesting on paper, it is very tempting for the players to not do the cool thing that you can do because you want to score more, which translates to, I'm not going to take any special powers because I, I, I'd rather not do the cool thing. I want to try to win. And so that, that worries me. You know, I, I never quite fully trust those games. I tell you, okay, in this thing, you can spend it to do this awesome ability. If you never spend it the whole game, you get plus 10 points. Why are you punishing me for doing the cool thing? Don't you want me to have fun and do the cool thing? And that's kind of how I feel in this one a little bit. I understand that it, it works. It's fine. And a lot of people maybe do like that. I This game has a lot of that. A game that has a little bit of that, I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, let's play. This one has a lot of that. And then it brings into question also the uh, the samurai character, the ninja character, I'm sorry, in which you are going to punish yourself by losing a point, potentially, in order to punish your opponent. And not only am I stealing a point, or a potential point, again, from my opponent, but I am also stealing their power. Which means if you were hoping to not use your powers and score a lot, well... I just smacked you twice, you know, because I robbed you of your power also. So I know that this is going to be a divisive thing, this this ability to be so confrontational, you know, uh, so directly confrontational. And it it breaks a little bit the idea of this being an abstract strategy game because in that way, it's so mean and it's such a take that kind of mechanism that it, it does not seem to fit the rest of what's going on. The rest is all manipulation to help you. Or even hurt your opponent. But in a roundabout kind of way. That one is just, I'm going to hurt you. You know, I'm going to help me by hurting you. And finally, tactics and strategy and randomness and luck. There is no randomness except for, except for the setup, which I like. And that's that's nice. And the luck, again, just just what you see at the beginning of the game. Which makes it feel like an abstract strategy game. Except for, again, maybe that, that ninja ability, which I think kind of uh, sticks out from the whole package a little bit. But, as far as the tactical richness, while it is enjoyable to play, I love, you know, manipulating the tokens, grabbing them, seeing what happens, scoring, trying to eke out a few points more than you here and there. That's fun, but it, to me, it kind of felt like it quickly became routine, and it falls into this rhythm 
of grab, you know, maybe use a power, but watch out because you might just hurt your score. Take a token, I grab four or six or seven points, and you grab two or three or four, then you grab a token, now you score eight or ten points, I score five or six, and so it kind of like falls into this rhythm that isn't necessarily, um, doesn't seem to build. There is no moment into the game that I felt more, you know, ramped up and like, oh boy, we're getting close to the climax of the gameplay here than at any other point. The scores, yes, they get slightly larger because I got more tokens on my side, and so do you. And yes, every now and then you'll have a cool turn where you like, I'm gonna trigger this character, I'm gonna move some of my uh, samurai over here, then I'm gonna trigger my ninja and steal that power and move this ghost token and boom, I just score that column, got a bunch of points. Cool, you can do that a couple of times in the game. That's nice, it's a nice little, you know, peak. But otherwise, the game has sort of a, a very routine feel to it. You, you quickly fall into a routine. So again, I'm not hating the strategy here or the tactics in the game. I'm just saying that it's also not um, necessarily an exciting adventure kind of feel to it, you know. So overall, I don't think this game is bad. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a fine game. I don't like the look of it necessarily, and it does feel a little bit all over the place when it comes to that. Gameplay is neat. It's a game that I think um, it almost feels like an abstract game for people that don't necessarily like abstract strategy games because they might look too plain and boring, they might be too dry perhaps. And so if you are that person and you're hoping to try an abstract game, but you are not sure how you feel about most of them, this is maybe a good one for you. It's gonna be a little more interaction between the players. It's gonna have that cool look to it. Uh, and as long as you don't care too much about the, you know, everything sort of matching, which is something of a pet peeve of mine, then I think you're gonna like it. I don't dislike it. I'm just not wowed by it, you know. I have better abstract strategy games that are a little bit more pure, a little bit more um, exciting as you are playing. They build to a moment where I'm like, oh, this is getting tricky now, you know. It's getting uh, interesting. I better be careful I don't make a mistake. Uh, I have those games for that, and then I have other more thematic games if I want that kind of experience. Even on the elegance aspect, this one doesn't blow anything else away, you know? So, all of that to say that I think it's a nice game, and I think there are a lot of people out there that could enjoy this game, but it's not one that, for me, is firing on all cylinders. Maybe it needed a little something more, Maybe it needed to be a little less mean and confrontational to to uh, bank on the other things it's doing. Um, that's kind of how I feel about it, you know? So there you go. Uh, not condemning it. Not much of a recommendation either, but if, it, if the overview looks good to you, then certainly feel free to give it a try. That is Take, and I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.